Hello, my name is Derek G. Hamlin, defense attorney extraordinaire, and welcome to the next installment of my video blog. Please understand, I am not your father's attorney. Now before we begin, I want to dedicate this video blog to the month of Movember. For the past 30 days, I've been growing out my mustache and beard to support charities that support men's health issues. Now that the month of Movember is over, you'll slowly see my beard and mustache disappear during this video. The first topic we'll discuss today is check scams. Check scams usually involve a person sending you a check, asking you to cash it, and then wire or Western Union them back a portion of the money. The bank will cash the check, and a few days later, you'll take out the money and send it to the person. And a couple of weeks after that, the bank will realize that the check was a fake and take all the money back out your account, leaving you with a negative balance. The bank will hold you completely responsible and they will often pursue you either criminally or civilly. Let's talk about a few examples of these scams. Many of us are familiar with those emails you get where a person says they won a foreign lottery or they received some type of inheritance and they need a United States bank account to cash in and they'll give you a portion. We all know to run from those but some of the more subtle ones may be a result of something you put out on the internet. For example, I had a client who attempted to sell his car for $1,500. Someone purchased his car, sent him a check for $4,000 and they said, why are the extra $2,500 to my friend in the United States so that they can ship the car back to me in Africa? Immediately, my client saw a red flag and called me. He said, Mr. Hamlin, what should I do? I told my client to leave the money in his account for two weeks and if the check clears and they don't take it back, go to the bank and make sure that there's no problem with the, with the check. The bank can contact the bank that the check is written on to make sure that this check is good. At that point, you can send the guy the money. But sure enough, a week and a half later, they withdrew the money back out of his account and he was so happy that he hadn't sent the person the money. Another case I've handled involved a person who actually worked for the money. He was a day laborer, he stood outside manpower, he worked for an entire week and this was his weekly paycheck. It was drawn on a foreign account and he had no idea. So we actually had a criminal trial for uttering and our whole defense was that not only did he not know it was a false check, he worked for the money. So of course we're not going to return it. He was found not guilty. Another major check scam that's been going around is a payment processor. What they'll do is they'll send you these fake checks. You don't know that they're fake checks, but they'll tell you it's your job to cash the checks and then wire 90% of the money back and you keep 10% as your payment. And they'll send you check after check after check until you're caught and the police shut you down. And so just be aware that nobody's going to pay you to cash a check for them. If they can mail it to you, they can mail it to the bank. The next topic we'll discuss is the decriminalization of marijuana. Please understand that marijuana is still not legal. However, they have taken steps to reduce the penalties for simple possession of marijuana. Originally, it carried a sentence of one year or $1,000 fine. However, if you're in possession of less than 10 grams, it carries a sentence of 90 days or a $500 fine. You wouldn't believe how often clients ask about medicinal marijuana. If you're using marijuana for medical necessity, the maximum fine you can receive is $100. But it has to be a bona fide medical necessity and it's limited to a few categories. You must have one of these diseases or conditions and more importantly it must be documented in your medical records by your medical doctor with whom the patient has a bona fide physician-patient relationship. And although that's not legalizing marijuana it does take away the jail time that you can receive and significantly reduces the fine. Again you want to pay attention to the quantity. I would never recommend that anyone use marijuana, but if you're going to, you probably want to have less than 10 grams on you or less than an ounce, whichever is smaller. And if you can't get your doctor to certify your medical records a need for marijuana, then you'd have a much better chance of this section of the code applying to you. Well, I hope you found my video blog informative and entertaining. And if you ever need a good attorney, 
Give us a call for a consultation and let's discuss your situation. I'm Derek G. Hamlin, attorney extraordinaire, going to bat for you.